What's the good word, y'all? I can't believe in less than 24 hours, Monday Night Football will be here and we'll get the first taste of real Jets football, meaningful win versus loss column games. And I wanted to dive into a lot of the storylines uh, circulating this matchup between the 49ers and the New York Jets. Uh, plenty of stuff with Aaron Rodgers historically against the team. Uh, and then, of course, plenty of the players on both sides of the ball. So let's dive into it here, kicking things off with probably the most important player for the New York Jets side. And in this case, I mean, Brees Hall. Uh, we've heard him speak as much as we have at any point uh, during his tenure so far going into, uh, what is this, year three now for him, right? So, Brees Hall has generally been a very quiet and reserved player, but this offseason, he's tapped uh, into that beast nature, if you will, and uh, we've heard him highlighting, uh, you know, listing out his goals, wanting to make the Pro Bowl, wanting to be an All-Pro, leaving zero doubt. Um, we know the ultimately his stamp on the season is going to be if he can pull off a Christian McCraff, uh, excuse me, a Christian McCaffrey type uh, performance, um, thousand plus on the ground, thousand plus through the air, uh, rushing and receiving. Um, that he'll be the you know undisputed, if you will, RB one moving forward in the league. Right? Uh, you can definitely make the case. There's been a lot of uh, national attention surrounding him, but overall, it still feels like people may have him on the fringe of a top five gathering for uh, top running backs in the league, or even outside in some cases. And I think a lot of that is just due to him having one substantial season obviously he had the injury impact um but then a lot of that is also just the new york jets right clunky offense um i think the fact that we've seen him produce what he's produced behind a terrible offensive line behind league uh historically worse quarterback play with a number of different qbs um and then, of course, not even really being implemented into the game plan in the receiving element until, you know, maybe week nine, week 10 of last season or later um, leads itself right. Everything that we feel as Jets fans leads itself to the credence that Maurice Hall is going to have some kind of historical performance. Right. Um, and so that's really the biggest thing here. And it is great to see us opening up week one against the 49ers because he's literally going to be able to uh, when he stand on the sidelines, watch CMC go out there and do what is routine for him. Hopefully not, right? Uh, but I mean, you, you know, he's the standard. Brees Hall has already kind of reciprocated that. Um, and so this will really be a, a matchup in my mind early in the season to kind of indicate who's the top running back in the NFL and if Brees Hall can certify he's legit right out of the gate. Now, there's a. Uh, one of the things that intrigued me the most as we've kind of gotten into the last couple of days here is that it felt like both teams may essentially be at full health going into this. And that won't necessarily be the case on the 49ers front. Even Christian McCaffrey himself, he's coming back from dealing uh, with some hamstring issues, some Achilles issues, uh, but it looks like he should be full go. Trent Williams, who's been on a holdout uh, for his extension, which he recently got, um, He's coming back, and from what I heard from Shanahan, it looks like they're not expecting to have to limit any snaps that he's playing. The game plan is to give him the the you know full amount of whatever's going to occur during the game, um, and only in a you know an emergency situation are they planning uh, to go to their backup if possible. And it makes sense, especially on the O line, when you want to think about how. Uh, um, how substitutions work it's not really a thing uh, that's why people put a, a huge in, uh, importance on having your starting five playing together gelling uh, developing guys through the draft etc um, and then with Brandon Ayuk he was the other major holdout name this offseason also recently receiving his extension with him though I was a little bit surprised by this because Shanahan mentioned he would be on a little bit more of a pitch count coming back into the season and so 
you expect that, right, with guys that haven't uh, really gone through any drill work, team practices, individual drills. Doing your conditioning on your own is going to be very different from doing what the team was uh, uh, prepping you for to acclimate to the rigors of, you know, the, the normal NFL. So, um I guess from that perspective, it makes a little bit of sense, but it's honestly kind of a plus for the New York Jets because I have been taking tabs on what's going on for them from a health perspective, but specifically looking at their their wide receiver core, you're talking about Debo being Debo and who he is. Brandon Ayuk, you obviously have, still have to deal with George Kittle, but if Brandon Ayuk is on a bit more of a pitch count, uh, especially considering what's happened to Ricky Pearsall, their um, their rookie receiver, that's uh, Cowing um, coming out there. They're going to have to roll out some guys that aren't necessarily. Um, I think they still have Jawan Jennings, but um, they'll be rolling out some guys that aren't necessarily uh, um, experienced, you know, yet. Uh, just kind of dip their feet into the water and play it around. So hopefully the Jets can take advantage of that with the depth that we have in our secondary as a cue for us. This is one of the few times I can remember where there hasn't been a ton of bulletin board material for either side. Everything from the Jets' perspective when discussing the 49ers has been uh, overwhelmingly positive. You have Robert Sala reminiscing on his relationship and, of course, his career as a coordinator starting out with the 49ers and, you know, the Shanahan family um, and really being able to, to build out the defense, right? And this is one of the other intriguing pieces here, um, but we'll talk about it in a minute, is uh, watching two eerily similar defenses that also at this current time have some of the same kind of holes within their roster but in terms of getting back into the bulletin board material piece really the 49ers have been the first team to slip up uh, and this came by way of Charvarius Ward um, and it wasn't I don't want to know I don't want to say this necessarily intended or anything of the sort it, it could just be a realism of uh, you know Char uh, Ward's experience here um, but essentially, he mentioned he you know doesn't really know about the weapons uh, in the New York Jets roster. Specifically, I think the entire league really knows about Garrett Wilson and what he's accomplished in the face of everything that Brees Hall has had to suffer through as well. But you know, even more so uh, since he's a primary passing weapon uh, in this New York Jets offense. But he claims to not know who he is, and you know, really had to do much research and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, We've seen Garrett Wilson take it, in stride, take it in stride during some press conferences over the course of training camp where he mentioned, you know, that's kind of expected. Uh, supposedly, he hasn't really done a ton in the NFL, even though he's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. And so, um, while outwardly he's expressing a lot of calmness, I'm sure internally he's burning up to make sure that Ward gets embarrassed out there on Sunday. Uh, so, just something to keep in the noodle. Um, other things that we have out there, you have Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, we have the Monday Night Football hot streak that he's been on. Technically, the record is 10 and 0 because he did start last year, even though it lasted four snaps. But officially, the record, um, or I guess I should say, officially, is 10 and 0. Technically, it's 9 and 0 in Monday Night Football games. Um, Extremely high passer rating, touchdown interception ratio, all those good numbers. We'll see how he handles the 49ers, though, who have been a little bit more of a thorn in his side. I believe he has a 6-7 and seven record uh, against the team. The Jets O-line, they have a major test. As I was mentioning, you're kind of looking at a copycat defense, right? If 49ers, uh, the version we're looking at right now is, is 1.0 of Robert Sala's original defense. We are on our side looking at the revamped copy, but they do have some extremely, extremely good pieces over there uh, on the 49ers. Obviously riddled all throughout, but of course up front is where the focus was, and they have some freaks, uh, as Robert Sala will put it, in the likes of Nick Bosa and such over there. Um, so this will be the first time that we really see the offensive line go out there. They're playing, uh, obviously, the majority, uh, if not all of the game, barring any health issues. And uh, this is the best litmus test you can get, right? You want to go out there and be challenged by a team that can absolutely wreck your game from start to finish. Uh, and so if we walk away from here 
Aaron Rodgers not really touching the ground, if touching it at all. Uh, Brees Hall having huge holes to run through, which is also one of the primary focuses, I would say, from a game plan standpoint for the Jets, because we know rush uh, runs up the middle. Um, tend to cause a lot of problems for us, right? Obviously, Quentin Williams a beast. I love the fact that Kinlaw is bulked up, and so you're kind of getting the best attributes of a Al Woods or a Quentin Jefferson from last year, but also with the athleticism of uh, guys like a Sheldon Richardson or a Quentin Williams and some of those guys that should be able to penetrate decently well. Um, but it has been a weakness for us over the course of the years. Um, and, you know, the way that we play our defense, there's going to be some some caveats that you have to kind of give up and expect as part of the game. But um, that is really one of the focal points I'll be watching. The trench warfare, obviously, that is a, a, a huge foundation uh, or philosophy of how, you know, both teams really want to build the rosters, dominating offensive line dominating defensive line and then they've developed guys on the back end to help take advantage of the chaos up front the jets we are missing as mentioned both teams aren't necessarily at full health we aren't um as impacted by injuries per se but we are missing hassan reddick and so uh, we've seen jermaine johnson um on multiple occasions try to alleviate some of the concerns that maybe we won't be able to get after teams the way that we expect to if you know people can focus in on other players like a jermaine johnson uh or a quentin williams and focus on just one guy to necessarily beat them um but we know he wants to be an apex predator speaking of jermaine johnson but hassan reddick we shall see soon enough how much of an impact his absence is going to cause for us, right? The 49ers, one of the best teams in the NFL, no question about it. One of the best offensive lines that we're going to be able to come across. And so you do have to think that maybe the leverage tilts one way or the other. If the Jets defense finds a way to feast, um, then that's going to lead a, a lot of positivity to that front office that they can just wait this thing out. Um, Hassan Reddick is sacrificing game checks right now. Um, he's obviously missed, uh, you know, the entire offseason. So he's looking at fines above, you know, I think currently he's around three and a half to four million dollars um, and he's going to start losing about eight to nine hundred thousand dollars in game checks um, coming up here. Who knows? Uh, but that's really going to be the biggest thing. We're going to be leaning on some people we may not have expected. Obviously, it was great seeing Tack explode this offseason onto the scene for the New York Jets and look like, uh, you know, a first round pick still. Jermaine Johnson, I think we're all comfortable with what his floor may look like, which is probably going to be like a, a five to eight sack guy consistently, but he does seem like he has the ceiling to reach that double digit sack uh, type performance over over the season. Uh, but then you get into the likes of Will McDonald. He did do pretty well in what he was afforded last year, picking up three sacks uh, this offseason. Once the training, uh, once the pads officially came on, we've seen him really start to shine and, you know, essentially pick up one, if not multiple sacks on a daily basis from that point moving forward. Uh, even though the early portions of the offseason may not have uh, um gone the way we expected, right? With the body transformation that was supposed to be uh, completed in the weight buildup. Um, and then, of course, you know, him utilizing some other moves, which I do still have a couple concerns over just because I don't want him relying on the spin move too, too much. Um, but obviously, there's been, you know, players that we've seen succeed with that. Uh, if I'm thinking of the right name, Dwight Feeney, for one, comes to mind. Um, but one of the other things is going to be, uh, you know, off the field. The coaching staff, right? We have the 49ers who are rolling out a new defensive coordinator uh, for, I think, the third time in as many years. Um, actually, this may be the second. I think D'Amico Ryan's had two shots at it before they move forward. But none, nonetheless, uh, you guys get the point. There's going to be a new D.C. in town for the 49ers. We're going to be testing him extremely early if this offense lives up um, to what every, uh, maybe not everybody, but at least what Jets fans expect us to be. Um, we obviously offer more firepower than I think the average NFL team between Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Tyler Conklin is all guys at worst are, you know, maybe a top 10 player at their position, let alone sprinkling in the Tyron Smiths, um, you know, the AVTs, the Morgan Moseses of the world. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, the Sala versus Shanahan chess match. 
two guys that know each other extremely, extremely well. Obviously, Shanahan has way more experience in the league than what Robert Sala does. Um, but Sala, you know, built his entire foundation around not only the principles he brought over from, uh, you know, I want to say the Commanders, uh, but the Seahawks, Texans, Texans, Seahawks. Um, but of course, being groomed and developed by Shanahan himself. And so you have to imagine Sala knows, uh, again, especially with this being a copycat defense, exactly what he wants to do. Um, and hopefully he has some wrinkles in place to be able to handle that. But Shanahan has not beat in terms of the experience, in terms of the game management uh, preparation standpoint. Obviously, their offensive coaching staff, in my opinion, is leagues ahead of where the New York Jets coaching staff is. The X factor for us, or at least the one that helps to balance the odds a bit is of course Aaron Rodgers who's conducting business out on the field um, but those are really the biggest storylines in my head that I'll be keeping uh, an eye out there for come Monday let me know what you guys think though um, and what your predictions are if anything I, I think the best case scenario for me if it's a Jets win I'm looking at like a, a 23-17 victory Jets um, Otherwise, I think this is relatively a close game no matter who wins just because the teams are built to win in the exact same way. Um, and so if nothing gets out of hand and it goes kind of, I guess, as expected, I would probably say 49ers. If they end up winning, it'd be like a 23-20 victory, uh, something like that. But I don't think anybody etches anybody out by more than six points. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you again. Peace.